Hi, my name is Shyam Podel. I'm an engineering manager at Brewer Science. This year at the annual AICIT, I am leading a session named Entrepreneurship and Investing in Early Stage Companies. I have with me today um, Dr. Sean. She works at Wilson Sansani, Goodrich and Rosati. She is a lawyer. Dr. Sean, welcome to the interview session today. Thank you, Shannon. I'm happy to be here. So, um, my guest is a featured speaker at this year's uh, AICAT meeting. Her background is in uh, chemistry, uh, she's, and now she's a patent lawyer. Earlier today uh, at the confer conference, you mentioned that you had a very uh, interesting background. You uh, went to school uh, for chemistry, um, and uh, now you are working as a patent lawyer. Can you please um, talk to us about how how that transfer happened? Uh, what made you become a patent lawyer? Did you know you wanted to be a patent lawyer? Um, I definitely didn't know I would be a patent lawyer when I was in college. Um, not in the graduate school, uh, but then um, after graduate school, I was doing my postdoc training and. Um, I was really serious to consider what I going to do for my career and get to know different career options, like the traditional way to be either industrial um, scientist or academia professor or, or maybe um, the non-traditional science path like editor um, or maybe a reviewer or patent law. So um, it's interesting, the place I worked um, for during my post about training, National Institute of House, they have excellent tech transfer program. And then um, I ended up took a fellowship there and got to know about what tech transfer involves and what a patent law career would take. So um, I took my patent bar while I was working there um, and I passed it and became a register, registered patent agent. And from then, I never looked back. I just moving forward and and I worked in the law firms for about eight years now. And when I was working full time as patent agent, um, I took started taking law school evening program. So I graduated last year um, from law school, and now I'm officially attorney. Okay, that's that's great. Uh, it's interesting uh, because I, I feel like a lot of our uh, chemical engineering students in yes. undergraduate school they they do not know about the career opportunities mm -hmm. that are available. Um, uh, but I have heard that uh, it is a very rewarding um, career to uh, follow. Mm -hmm. uh, is that right? Yeah, yes, definitely. So now, even though I don't work in the research labs anymore, I still um, read about science, technologies, um, because we um, work with uh, technology companies, help them build a portfolio and how to uh, make the company grow and work with the VCs. So um, it's very variety of tasks involved in our daily uh, work. And then I'm surrounded by amazing colleagues who many of them are engineers and scientists. So very easy to talk to because we think alike. We're very analytical and, uh, and very uh, detail oriented. The goal driven. Okay, okay, that's that's great. Uh, so uh, in uh, in the startup community for uh, newer companies that are uh, coming out of the universities, yeah, we we find a lot of uh, information technology related. You know, mm -hmm. you make an app and and, and there is a company, right? Mm -hmm. Versus uh, there is chemical startups where uh, people have some kind of new idea uh, that comes out of uh, a lab. Mm -hmm. What are what are the uh, in terms of IP management, uh, intellectual property management, mm -hmm. what are the differences um, between the startup in IT versus a chemical startup? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here are my thoughts. Um, for either technology, IP protection is very important. And then there's some differences, um, in my opinion. And first of all, for IT, um, in terms like, for example, software development, the life cycles are very short, so they get updated really quickly. So we need to uh, consider the cost return analysis, what kind of IP form will suit to them, and uh, maybe 
um, instead of the regular standard utility patent, we may apply for copyright, um, uh, design patents that are much quicker to get and uh, less costly than standard patent. Um, but for the uh, chemical or life science inventions, we usually recommend utility patents because um, you know the life cycle is much longer from lab testing through clinical trial, regulatory approval, and then finally get it to the patient it can take at least five to 10 years. And then during that um, testing or optimization research period, they usually, after they find the right compound uh, technology, they will stick with it, right? And then they will carry out years of research and test of education on that and make sure this is the right, they're working for them. So the, this is a fit perfectly for the UTD patent because we capture uh, the structure and the active agents, how to use them. And then so UTD patents it's, it can cover much broader um, scope of the technology versus uh, copyright of just design patents. Okay, so... But definitely the cost more too. <laughs> okay, um, so what are we talking talking about? You know, for for a student, let's say sophomore or, or even a graduate student, uh, they they want, they have this new great idea and they they mm -hmm. want, uh, they want to patent that idea. What, what is the amount of money we're talking about here? Um, so, um, and first of all, depending on the technology and the complexity of it, and the different IP protection can be used. And for copyright, if they just want to register their source code, it can take just like a few hundred dollars and then register with the U.S. government. And for design patent, it's very easy to write. At least you provide with the lawyers, with the uh, figures, the drawings of the um, for instance, the GUI, the graphical user interface, and you, you, you draw uh, um, the picture, the, the interface for different angles, and you can include that in the design patterns. So it could be like a couple of thousand dollars, um, things like that. And just don't quote for me, but this is the, the ballpark of it. It can be more, depends on the uh, complexity of technology. But for the um, like a drug application, a medical device application, if you want to file standard utility applications, the first application may take a lot more money to draft because the um, application disclosure has to be really comprehensive. And then the patent claims, which is the heart of the patent application, and it needs a lot of time, attorney time, to make it perfect. Okay, okay, yeah. great. Um, so, uh, for for a scientist, uh, what what would be the right time to contact uh, with the lawyer? Any time, and as early as possible, because um, for us the patent attorneys, we are essentially like is our a service industry, right? Like we want to help with the um, tech companies from get go once they have the ideas. And before any public disclosure, they come to talk to us. Even just initial consultation to know what to do next, um, then we can lay out the steps for them and possible actions. And then, and then we understand their um, companies may worry about what the attorney costs. Like. But then depending on, they can come up with, with uh, us with a budget quote, and then we can work around with that budget and to give them their actions to do, like for these six months you can do this, and then once you get a company with more funding, we can do this in the next 12 months or in the year or two. So we can, we are their counsel, so we can help them to uh, plan out their pattern protection strategy. But they are the companies that are decision makers, they make their final decisions. Okay, okay, great. Uh, Sean, I would like to thank you very much for uh, sharing your thoughts uh, with us uh, today. Uh, so the last question for you, uh, if you could give one piece of advice for, uh, for a starting entrepreneur mm. straight out of college, uh, what would that advice be? Um, be vigilant and proactive of IP protection because IP is the most valuable asset of uh, startup companies. So um, whenever they have a doubt, talk to experienced patent professionals and um, 
be proactive and ask the questions. And think about, for instance, the employment contract. Let's start a company, and you have consultants, regular employees, and collaborators, and make sure they sign the right agreement, the company owned the IP. Um, and then once the, the, if the companies want to have um, talks with the collaborators and, and potential investors, and make sure they sign the non-disclosure confidential agreement. So, um, yeah, so just be, be re vigilant of IP protection and, uh, um, and then talk to us. Okay. Um, whenever they have uh, questions. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Yeah.